back. It is my great pleasure to uh, welcome my partner in crime on this series, uh, Miss Kelly Peterson, who has been such a, a, a joy to work with. I'll tell you just briefly how this came about. I first met Oscar in 1995 at a concert I presented at the Ravinia Festival in, in Chicago, and Kelly traveled with Oscar, and, and their daughter Celine traveled. She was about this big at the time. Uh, and we we started a kind of just a, a, a brief friendship that lasted one day every year, uh, every time I presented Oscar, until I moved uh, 20 years later almost to Toronto, and we bumped into each other and concocted this series. Uh, and I kind of put a framework together that I thought might work and then took it to Kelly and she fleshed it out and told me who to invite and who not to invite, more importantly. Uh, and everybody that we had on the list said yes. So you made good choices. Thanks. Thanks. Let me just uh, do uh, two quick thank yous. Uh, first of all is to Yamaha Canada. Uh, Yamaha, uh, maybe m many of you know, we have a Yamaha grand piano here at the conservatory, uh, which you will hear uh, for our surprise guest at the end. Uh, but because we needed to save that Yamaha for our surprise guest, we needed another piano for, for the band to play tonight. So Yamaha uh, delivered this uh, gigantic piano for us, which is the Bosendorfer piano that Oscar Peterson played every time he was at Roy Thompson or Massey Hall or anywhere else in Ontario. So thank you, uh, thank you to, to Yamaha for uh, being with us for, for many things at the conservatory, but particularly tonight. And the second thank you I'd like to make is uh, those of you who were with us for our first concert enjoyed Dave Young and, and Robbie Botosh and a, a, a bunch of great, great, great Toronto musicians. Well, they were so thrilled by that show that they went into the studio about uh, a couple of months later and recorded it. And Dave is here tonight, and he handed me the CD that came out today. It's called It's called Dave Young Quintet: Aspects of Oscar, uh, and it's available now. We're going to actually do a record release party here at the Conservatory on April 19th. Uh, which is coincidentally the day we're also going to announce our next season of concerts. So uh, look out for those. Commercials are over. <laughs> so Kelly, I, I, I'm always, I've always been curious. I mean, so many great Canadian artists, writers, actors, directors have gotten their start somewhere in Canada. And the minute they reach some kind of level of fame, they, they leave and go to California or New York or London. And Oscar didn't. Why? Canada was his home, and he was always proud of it. Uh, there was a time, he said, probably in the 50s, when he thought about getting a green card, and he was in Los Angeles recording for Norman Granz a lot, and was sort of encouraged to do that. But he was too much Canadian, and then decided not to. He decided, no, my home is Canada, I travel around the world to perform. I don't need to live in New York or Los Angeles. I can stay in my home. Which, which is, I think, almost word for word what Glenn Gould said. Wow. Who, who wanted to stay and always stayed in Toronto as his home. Um, and coincidentally, if you didn't hear, uh, Glenn Gould Prize was announced yesterday. Oscar was the, I think, the sixth recipient or he was the third third recipient mm -hmm. uh, yesterday in our lobby uh, they announced the ninth recipient uh, who will be Leonard Cohen another great Montrealer if I might be so proud to, to mention of course uh, so when did Oscar come into your life in 1981 uh, I had well actually he came into my life much sooner than that because my parents played his records, and I grew up listening to his records. And uh, when I was a university student, he played a concert nearby, and my mother and brother and I went. And I went to a concert of his when I lived in New York City. Uh, so I was a fan. Uh, then, a few years later, 1981, I was managing a restaurant in Sarasota, Florida. He was playing a concert, and I wanted to go, but I couldn't take the night off work because it was 
busy winter season. And uh, the good thing was, we served food late at night. And we were the only restaurant that did. Oscar never ate before a concert, and so he needed some place to go and eat. And he came to the restaurant where I worked. And I met him. Had I gone to the concert, I never would have met him. So <laughs> it was kind of fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued uh, by what you're doing day to day now, uh, which is basically taking care of the legacy of Oscar Peterson. And there are so many different projects that are out there, and I'm sure you get you know, hundreds of requests to do this with his song or with his name or with, with his CD. Uh, tell me a few of the things that are kind of in the works or, or have been done already. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we're working on currently is to put on DVD the television series that Oscar did for the CBC in the early 1980s. So, fingers crossed, we'll see that on DVD at some point. Do we need to write letters to anybody at CBC uh, or um, CRTC? Um, no, no, Universal Music. <laughs> and um, there's, then there's another totally different project. Al Gilbert is a photographer here in Toronto, uh, and he did a lot of portraits of Oscar throughout Oscar's career, and is putting together a very, very limited edition folio of photographic prints done the old way, the silver prints. So that's another thing that, that's very different, uh, not having to do with the music, but having to do with portraits of Oscar. Um, what else? You, you Other told, ideas, I you, guess. You told me about the watch that, that's, that's right. out there. There's a watch. Or, there's a Oris, the Swiss, Swiss watchmaker named Oris, does, uh, has a series of watches devoted to jazz. And that last year they produced a watch, the Oscar Peterson limited edition watch. And it was designed very much with Oscar in mind. The hour indices are piano keys. And Oscar's logo is on the back, and it comes in a black lacquer box, much like the black lacquer of the Bösendorfer, with a limited edition DVD. And they made 1,925 of those in honor of the year Oscar was born. So. Well, we, um, we hold Oscar dear in our hearts at the conservatory. He, he did get an honorary fellowship here uh, uh, several years ago from... Uh, our president, uh, Peter Simon. Uh, but Oscar also studied our curriculum and had our piano books in his house, I gather, uh, growing up in St. Henri in Montreal. Yes, uh, he did. Taught by his sister, I think. Was it that his first teacher? His first teacher was his sister, Day well, sort of. His father gave them all assignments, all of them. But Oscar did learn from Daisy because she was five years older. So. And. Was was the the first the big big break was was that Count Basie first hearing him or was that Norman Grant's first hearing him and how how did he go from playing in Montreal and a couple of things in Canada to to jazz at the Philharmonic? It seems like such a giant leap from a young kid from Montreal. It it was pretty giant. Uh, Count Basie had heard him and. Ben Webster and Sweets Edison had also heard him, and they sort of told Norman, but Norman hadn't heard him. And Norman Granz was in Montreal doing, uh, promote, getting ready for a concert that he was going to be producing there two weeks later. And he was in a taxi cab. I mean, it's a true story. It sounds like fairy tale, but it's a true story that he was in a taxi cab on his way to the airport and heard this piano playing. and said to the taxi driver, who is that? What rate, you know, I want to I wanna know whose record that is. And the driver said, no, this is live. It's coming from the Alberta Lounge. It's Oscar Peterson. Norman said, turn around, take me there. And that's, he, that's exactly what happened. He walked in. Oscar knew enough about Norman to know that he wore saddle shoes. And he saw the shoes coming in to the club. And, and then he saw Norman's signature eyebrows, which were huge. And uh, Norman said, what are you doing here? Why don't you come to Carnegie? Come to New York, play Carnegie Hall. You'll know if you can make it or not. And so he did. And I guess he made it? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, we, th this has been such a, a great pleasure for me personally, having known Oscar just a little bit. I, I wasn't a great friend, uh, but growing up in Montreal as a music lover, uh, to be able to share these five nights with everybody here and, and the artists we have, and your help and, and encouragement has meant uh, just the most to me. Uh, I think I was thinking today what we were going to talk about, and it's, it's hard talking to you live. <laughs> It, because we've become such uh, friends, but this has really been a highlight of, of my career as a programmer to put this series together with you, and every single concert has exceeded my expectations, and I think we've talked about that yeah. from you as well. It's, it's just been wonderful. It's so exciting. Uh, I'm always moved and always excited. The musicians have been great. You've done an incredible job, and you said you weren't a, a close friend of Oscar's, and yet I want you to know how much he respected you and admired you and looked forward to playing your concerts because of the way you understood what a musician, what an artist needs. Well, thank you. So. <laughs> we, uh, uh, that's, uh, We'll talk later. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have a final surprise at the end. Uh, so if you could just stay in your seats uh, when, when Roy's band is finished, I have uh, someone I want to introduce to you uh, uh, named Dr. John uh, Walker. He's going to explain what you're going to um, hear and who you're going to hear, um, and then we'll end the series in style. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, these shows have, have as, as I said, have, have been all sold out. We will announce our next season, uh, April 19th. It has nothing to do with piano players. That's all the hint I'm going to give you. <laughs> but uh, it'll be great. And before we go, we have a couple of, uh, uh, of things, uh, mementos for you, Kelly. So if, if I can ask uh, Brittany Cathcart on my staff to come out here. And Pascal. We've, uh, we've framed all the uh, concert programs from the, these five concerts for you, and uh, our entire staff, from our ushers to our uh, bar staff to our, our uh, sound and lighting people, have all signed it, and they have all enjoyed every one of these concerts as well. So thank you, Kelly, for, for putting these thank together. You. And now Roy Hargrove, coming back. Thank you. 